Hey guys, and welcome back to Back Beyond Tech. So, um, maybe a week ago, eight, nine days ago, I got my new cooler, and my temperature has improved quite a lot, and I thought, well, is Broadwell E really that bad an overclocker? Well, let's find out how I got on. Hey guys, so like I said, I got my new cooler the other week. I got a 360mm AIO from Arctic and I was really impressed with the performance I got from it. It dropped my idles and my load temps down by quite a bit. Um, so I got to wondering, well, you know, how far can I push my 6800K? Is it really a terrible overclocker? Um, I'd, I'd read online, you know, that some people are having to go to 1.45 volt to get sort of 4.4, 4.5 gigahertz on all cores. And I just thought, you know, well, is that really the case? So I decided to start experimenting and see how far I could push my chip uh, and get it stable. It was important, it had to be stable. So it had to be stable for at least an hour on IDA 64. So um, this is what I did, guys. So, <laughs> so I updated my BIOS, first of all, um, just cause my BIOS was the original BIOS that came with the board. So Asus had re released a new BIOS and I thought, well, I might as well update that. I then got into the BIOS and started messing around. Now, what you'll notice from my settings is that I actually got 4.5. So um, I got a multiplier of 45 on all cores stable at 1.35 volt, which is a huge amount less than some, some people were saying. It's like 100, uh, uh, yeah, it'd be 100, no, not millivolts, it'd be... 0.1 of a volt less than what some people were using to get 4.4 and um, so I was quite surprised about that um, so I'm not sure if that's the fact that I've got a really good chip or the BIOS update but it's probably a combination of the both I don't think I've got an amazing chip I think I've got an okay chip and um, but either way I was really surprised about that the one thing you will notice though is that I had to go into manual mode so I wasn't really getting any joy with adaptive mode um, it wasn't syncing all the cores to 4.5 uh, gigahertz. So anyway, got to 4.5 gigahertz, booted into Windows, no problem. And I was able to run IDA64 for just over an hour. I was doing other stuff in the background. And this is what I found. So previously at 4.2 gigahertz, which was also at 1.35 volt, believe it or not, my idles on the CPU package were 24 degrees and <clears throat> the hottest core was 26 degrees under load the package got to 38 degrees and the hottest core was 46 degrees now moving over to the 4.5 gigahertz overclock at 1.35 volt continuously my uh, my previous 4.2 overclock was adaptive and um, my temps were this so an idle it sits around 25 degrees and um, the hottest core gets to 19 which i don't really understand i think ida might be messing it up but i left the machine idling for sort of an hour and a half and and those are the results that it gave so got to go with them and then under load interestingly enough the package got to 42 degrees which is only four degrees hotter um than it was getting at 4.2 and the hottest core was 53 degrees which is only seven degrees hotter than it got at the 4.2 gigahertz overclock now I'm really happy with those temps and I'm really happy with that voltage of 1.35 volt. That's way less than what some people were saying. Um, not that I think there's anything wrong with going over 1.4 volt, but you know, it kind of reminds me of uh, back in the day when I used to run FX processors and you had to push the voltage really high on them. Um, so like I said, I'm, I'm super happy. I'm kind of interested as to why at the same voltage my chip is running hotter albeit ever so slightly it could be the ambience in here different something like that but you know it's a fair seven degrees is a fair bit under load um on the hottest core um it's a bit less on the package you know you know the package is only getting to 42 degrees under load maximum so that's really impressive um so that's really it guys so i've been trying a few other bits and bobs i've tried 4.7 it actually got to the Windows loading screen of 4.7, so I'm not going to say 4.7 is possible um, because it might just be beyond this chip. It, it might no matter how much voltage I put through it. That was at 1.385 volts. It got to the loading screen. Um, 
I don't want to go above 1.4. Um, I don't want it to be running with that much voltage going through it 24-7. It's just, just me personally. Um, I'm quite happy with 4.5. Um, but I'd also like to see how far it will actually go. Um, so yeah, super happy. And I've got to say to you out there, for all those people who say Broadwell E can overclock, um, well, I'm getting an extra 700 megahertz out of this at really acceptable temperatures. You know, I, I can't complain about these temperatures. They're absolutely fine. It's on full load in IDA 64. Um, so yeah, it's pretty good. And what I would suggest people do is if they are having problems and they're trying to overclock on this platform, or any platform, um, especially the, ex the the kind of enthusiast grade platforms, um, I, I would suggest update your BIOS. Um, seriously guys, update your BIOS. If you're not that confident with overclocking before you update your BIOS, go through and just, you know, screenshot or photograph all your all your settings in the BIOS so you can just plug them straight back in, um, you know, if you're not comfortable sticking them in again or, or it's been a while since you've done it. Um, do that and update your BIOS and you never know, you might actually get the same overclock for less voltage uh, or you might get a better overclock for the same voltage. Um, equally, you might not get any benefit. The second thing I would say uh, is, and I'm a massive convert to you now um, after having used this Arctic Liquid Freezer 360, is get yourself a water cooler. If you're going to be running a high core chip, get yourself a, a water cooler if you're going to be overclocking. Um, this thing has not been swamped at all by heat. A lot of people online were talking about their 240, 280 millimeter radiators just being overwhelmed by the heat these chips are producing. Um, I haven't found that. I, this thing's fine. You can barely hear it sometimes in the background. Um, so yeah, that's what I would say to do. And uh, all I can say is, uh, I'm going to be building a, a, a custom open loop in the future. I'm, I'm kind of falling in love with water cooling again. Well, guys, that's the video. Um, if you've got any questions, um, you know, give me a shout. Let, let me know. Let, um, comment if you think the video is worthwhile. I hope it's helped you. Um, if you've got any other questions about overclocking, drop them in the comments below. Um, and yeah, don't forget to hit that like button if you like the content. And don't forget to subscribe if you're enjoying the content, guys. I'm trying to get to, I'd like to get to a thousand subs by sort of summertime, so I've got another 400 to go. Channel growth slowed down a little bit, but it'd be great if we could push it up. And um, yeah, I'll catch you in another great tech video. Bye now.